There was the same hearty cheer as before, and the mugs were empty to the dregs. But as the animals outside gazed at the scene, it seemed to them that something strange had happened. What was it that altered in the faces of the pigs? Clover's old eye, eyes flittered from one face to another. Some of them had five chins, some had four, some had three. But what was it that seemed to be melting and changing? Then the applause having come to an end, the company took up their cards and continued the game that had been interrupted, and the animals crept silently away. But they had not gone 20 yards when they stopped short. An uproar of voices was coming from the farmhouse. <clears throat> they rushed back and looked through the window again. Yes, a violent quarrel was in progress. There were shoutings, bangings on the table, sharp, suspicious glances, furious denials. The source of the trouble appeared to be that Napoleon and Mr. Pinkleton had played an ace of spades simultaneously. Twelve voices were shouting in anger, and they were all alike. No question now what had happened to the faces of the pigs. The creatures outside looked from pig to man, and from man to pig, and from pig to man again. But it was already impossible to say which was which. Ah, reading from the good book of Animal Farm, George Orwell. There is Marcus Conti, investigative journalist, opinionist, candidate for the United States Senate here in New York. Wow, so John McCain, John McCain is dead. 81 years later, John McCain is dead. So I know there's a lot of opinions. The guy dies, you know, he, he lived his life. And, uh, and I'm sure, you know, corporate media is going to do a good job at glorifying his life and his death. and such a patriotic American he was and they're gonna raise the flags and but to me George Orwell, uh, John McCain is became no different than any of the other pigs in the in George Orwell's story uh, story of Animal Farm where people are, are trying to be free of tyranny throw the tea in the, uh, you know, the Boston Tea Party. We're not going to take British rule anymore. We throw the tea in the, in the, you know, in the ocean. Give them back their tea. Uh, freedom, right? Freedom against tyranny. But John McCain, there's two types of idiots in the world, right? There's, there's one idiot that, that wholly believes what they're saying. In other words, for John McCain, he believed in, you know, uh, peace through, f through might, military, how many stripes you have, right? He was a military guy, yes sir, no sir, willing to die for his, for his, you know, assignment, was captured and tortured and that became his identity, right? He believes, he's a believer in that system, right? Or at least he was. And then there's the other kind of idiot that is just the opportunist, the, the straight out, you know, what I, uh, Eisenhower warned of, the military industrial complex, the guys, the profiteers, the, the Lockheed Martins, the Boeings, the, you know, right? So I think McCain, I think McCain was both kind of idiots. I think he started out as the idiot who believed and then he became the opportunist idiot. Right. In my view, you know, we're 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 safer today. We're 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 more more of the American ethos in my view today without John McCain. John McCain is a guy who, you know, I'm, I'm by the I, I I just filmed by the I'm by the fort Fort Hamilton in in Brooklyn, New York, and that flag that I just had on on camera. And all the flags around the fort are flying high. They're not half mast for the loss of John McCain. Right?
John McCain is a guy who believes in, you know, military industrial complexes, for the most part, financially and economically illiterate. He believed in Reaganomics and supported Greenspan and he supported Henry Kissinger in the, in the war machine, right? He was, he's, a, he's a pig. He became the pig in the card game, right? He's the same, right? Both playing the ace of spades. Listen to what, listen to what Orwell is telling you. They both play the ace of spades at the same time. There's only one ace of spades in the deck, but they're both playing it. The cheaters, right? They become liars and cheaters, right? Anybody who, who votes to raise the military spending to $700 billion in America against an enemy, enemy we don't have doesn't deserve our respect, doesn't deserve our, our, our intelligence, our, our um, and all the while, one in seven people on food stamps and 40% of the country is living in object poverty with less than $400 to their name. But you think that military might against an enemy we don't have is worthy. I disagree. And then there's the Steele dossier in his final days. I did like what, what McCain said when he lost to Obama. He gave a kind of a, a heartwarming speech about country and patriotism and all that stuff, right? Service to country, but those are just words, you know? Those are just words. They're not, they're connected to a, to a distorted view of, a militarized view of society where young people, millions of young people, 180,000 young people each year sign up for the military in, a, in what is clearly a poverty draft and go and fight in senseless interventionist wars. In a good economy, you don't need that, right? In a good economy, you don't need, you don't need the poverty draft. That, that would go away in a good economy. Lower the military spending. Don't raise it. Lower it by 80%. Choke those motherfuckers. Choke them out of business. Right? Take away their money. That's what they're doing to us. Right? They took the guns. Now they're gonna come. They're coming for the phones. They're coming for. They're coming for your phone next. Watch. They're coming for your internet connection. Watch. That's how they win. So John McCain, the warmonger, the fearmonger, the the liar in the end, the liar, Steele Dossier, right? Playing the same ace of spades, right? He played the same ace of spades as the rest of them, right? Is it a life to be celebrated, John McCain? Is it a life? It's an American life for, for certain. It's definitely an American life. Oh, you know what I could do? I want to, I'll end this. I, I always talk about the um, Stonewall Jackson and General Lee with two Confederate generals in the, uh, in the uh, Civil War of the United States of America. And they were, uh, I believe both generals surrendered here at, at Fort Hamilton, right? Americans, are fight, Americans fighting Americans in the American Civil War. No foreigners, just a disagreement of labor law, law and other things. Slavery, that stuff, right? But on this spot, right, there's, there was this controversy. I, I spoke to a, uh, I was here when they cut it down. Check, check this out. See that? Right? This, is, this is John McCain's world, right? You see that? See that tree? Right? This is the, uh, what's called the Church of the Generals. It's not a church anymore. They sold out the property. But in that spot right there were, was a plaque. And that tree is the actual tree or a piece of the tree of General Lee and Stonewall Jackson, a monument to those guys. And you could see where they sawed the, the monument off. They literally cut the fucking thing off, right? I was here when they did it. They did it with, with sawzalls. So disrespectful. 
and they threw it in the back of a truck and it's gone. Right? That's the kind of country that John McCain presides over, some kind of corruption where it's, it's playing into the lowest denominator of, of humanity, where you're creating this hateful environment, us against them, right? For, for, the, for, the, for the popular popularity contest, right? Get the minority votes, tell them that, the, that half the country was racist, anti-black, had slaves. Right? It's history. It's the history of a great nation. You don't take out a sawzall and cut it, cut it down. Here in New York, they were going after the uh, Columbus statue in Columbus Circle. The, the loony left, the pink pussy hats, they wanted to take down Columbus. Christopher Columbus statue because he's a racist. But that's the type of, that's the, in, the, in the final analysis, that's what John McCain was. He was a kook, a loony liberal, militant. It, it didn't even, what, what he represents in his life is nothing that I, I aspire to be now or ever aspired to be. But he's a great American. Right now, on, the corporate media is running it round the clock. They're going to run it all day long. How dare him die in the you know, in the middle of the night when CNN was <laughs> out partying, right? But they'll get up now and in New York, it's 9 o'clock New York time, you'll watch round-the-clock coverage of the greatness of John McCain and I don't know, I conclude that thank you John McCain for your for your fine example of everything you should not be in America as an American I think that children and young people, 17, 18 years old, online right now waiting to go train and fight and die in a fucking stupid war that has nothing to do with peace at home, you know, might be in a better place now with a guy like that not there. So. My name is Marcus Conti, investigative journalist, reporter opinionist candidate for the United States Senate. Oh, um, did I mention while you're here? You could buy stickers, my stickers. See my stickers? Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. It's an American flag. Real patriotism, right? Real patriotism. Buy these on eBay. I put a link down below. Peace out. Enjoy your day.